All our lives, we've been told. Work hard. Achieve. Get to the next level. But sometimes, our best efforts fall short. We start to think maybe we don't have what it takes. Or maybe we do. Jesus took on the sins of the whole world. He conquered even death itself. He invites us to follow him. He wants us to trust him. And through him, in his body and blood, we are united in Jesus. And to each other. Everything we're searching for. Hail Mary, full of grace. Our hopes and our dreams. Point to the Father. Who loves us unconditionally. Who called us by name. If you knew that receiving the Eucharist would change your life, what would you do? What would you do? What would you do? Join us for the year of the Eucharist. Good morning, my friends, and welcome to the Chalice of Salvation, coming to you from the Holy Spirit Chapel. I'm your Chalice Souls Passionist, Brother Terrence Gallen, welcoming you on this, the first Sunday of February. Our readings this morning all share a familiar theme. Isaiah has some advice to help us disperse the darkness and live in the light. That light is meant to be shared. Paul is determined to bring the light of faith to the Corinthians by displaying the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus tells his disciples to let their light shine for all to see. May God's word inspire us to the light, the way of the, for others through the darkness. And friends, we are most pleased to welcome back to our chapel today, Father Ryan Rooney, pastor of Our Lady of the Sacred Heart Parish here in Springfield. He has brought with him members of his worshiping community. They will be our readers and music ministers today. We welcome all to the Holy Spirit Chapel. Father will offer today's liturgy for the deceased members of the George Lynch family, longtime benefactors of our chalice ministry. And as we do each week, we send out our best wishes and congratulations to all celebrating those special birthdays or anniversaries today and in the coming week. We have some special birthday shout outs today to a group of loyal Chalice viewers. First, related birthday wishes to Mary Georgie, who celebrated her 100th birthday last week. Mary is a member of Our Lady of Mount Carmel Parish here in Springfield, and we join them in celebrating her special day. And birthday congratulations also go out to Helen Rogers as she celebrates her 100th and 7th birthday on Thursday. Helen is a member of Our Lady of the Cross Parish in her hometown of Holyoke. We wish both of these special women a very happy birthday. We also send out our prayers for those who are ill or homebound, as well as those watching this broadcast from your hospital rooms, nursing homes, and extended care facilities. You continue to be in our thoughts and prayers, including those dedica dedicated people who care for you. We also will enroll the names that you have sent in to us for today's week's Book of Remembrance. Today, this includes Sister of St. Joseph, Pat Johnson, who passed away last Saturday. Sister was a native of Holyoke and taught in numerous Catholic schools in the Worcester Diocese, later serving in many administrative positions. Sister Pat was laid to rest this past Wednesday. May her soul and the souls of all the faithfully departed rest in the embrace of our risen Lord. 
We now turn to our music ministers from Sacred Heart Parish for our gathering hymn and greet Father Ryan Rooney and together celebrate the fifth Sunday of Ordinary Time. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, as we gather on this fifth Sunday of Ordinary Time, we gather during a cold snap, but we pray that the, the grace and the warmth of the Holy Spirit is in our hearts and in your homes. Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, share your bread with the hungry, shelter the oppressed and the homeless, clothe the naked when you see them, and do not turn your back on your own. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your wound shall quickly be healed. Your vindication shall go before you, and the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help and he will say, here I am. If you remove from your midst oppression, false accusation and malicious speech, if you bestow your bread on the hungry and satisfy the afflicted, then light shall rise for you in the darkness and the gloom shall become for you like midday. The word of the Lord. and merciful and just were the man who is gracious and lamb who conducts his affair with justice the just man is a light to the upright in darkness he shall never be moved the just shall be in everlasting remembrance an evil report he shall not fear his heart is firm trusting in the Lord This shall endure forever, his horn shall be exalted in glory. The just man is a light to the upright in darkness. The just man is a light to the upright in reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, proclaiming the mystery of God, I did not come with sublimity of words or of wisdom. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I came to you in weakness and fear and much trembling, and my message and my proclamation were not with persuasive words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of spirit and power, so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. The word of the Lord.
the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You are the salt of the earth. But if salt loses its taste, with what can it be seasoned? It is no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city set on a mountain cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and then put it under a bushel basket. It is set on a lampstand where it gives light to all in the house. Just so, your light must shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Put yourself in the disciples' place in this gospel and imagine the Lord Jesus telling you that you are salt and light. You might ask, what does this mean? Why salt? Salt was part of the covenant with David and his sons in the Old Testament. It was a sign of unity and preservation. As Jesus explains, when salt loses its taste, it's good for nothing. Why light? That's a little bit easier for us to understand, as St. John calls Jesus the true light, who gives light to everyone. This image was just celebrated the other day in the Feast of the Presentation, where Simeon calls Jesus the light for revelation to the Gentiles and glory for God's people Israel. What does this mean, then, that Jesus calls us salt and light? It means that the church continues the mission of Israel, not just in theory, but in practice, not just on our own, but united directly to Christ himself. In the first reading, we hear of the command God gives to Israel through Isaiah to be just. The concept of social justice isn't something that was invented by the church, but has its origins in natural law written on every human heart. The mission of Israel, highlighted by the construction of the great city of Jerusalem, was to be a city on a hill, a beacon of justice for all. Sadly, to this very day, the Holy Land is still a place where violence and tension often obscure that light that is meant to be for the rest of the world. Yet Jesus, who came into that very place 2,000 years ago, constructed a church by calling his disciples to go out to the ends of the earth, proclaiming the good news, being examples of peace and justice. The church is clear that we are to continue sharing bread with the hungry, sheltering the oppressed and the homeless, clothing the naked when we see them, and not turning our backs on our own. The church isn't supposed to be a club of the elite where oftentimes oppression, false accusation, and malicious speech dominate our theological wars between certain factions like liberals and traditionalists. But the church is supposed to be motivated to be Christ to people in need, and we can't simply just check a box because the work isn't done, the work goes on. We can and should give thanks for all the work done through our annual Catholic appeal this past year, surpassing our goal. But the church does not rest on its laurels. We actively seek where we must go next. There is an old saying attributed to a Sioux proverb, the longest journey one will take is from the head to the heart. While this is a beautiful saying, I think if we listen to the gospel imperative, there is a longer journey afoot. It's not enough to think and know about our faith. It's not even enough to cherish our faith in our hearts. Instead of saying, I know that it's good to take care of the poor, we have to say, I will take care of the poor. By actually caring for the poor, that proves that we know and love our faith. Like how St. James says, demonstrate your faith to me without works, 
and I will demonstrate my faith to you from my works. Jesus calls us salt and light. Are we living up to it? Are we merely salty, meaning grumpy complainers who merely talk the talk without walking the walk? Are we merely laser pointers who are so narrowly focused on one aspect of our faith that we end up blinding those around us to the true light of Christ? Or are we fully flavored salt, working to unify and preserve the richness of our church? Are we shining beacons of light to the places where the world forgets, to the dark margins of our society? We don't have to be the smartest. We don't have to be the most talented Catholic speakers or influencers or the leaders of every devotional, devotional group. Our faith simply has to rest on the power of God. As St. Paul says, just so, Jesus says, your light must shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. Be the salt, be the light. Together let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life in the world to come. Amen. Amen. We call to mind the needs of the world, aware that God works through us to dispel the darkness and share the light with all those in need. Our response to our petitions this morning will be, Lord, hear us. For the church, that we may shine forth with the light of Christ by sharing our bread with the hungry, sheltering the oppressed and the homeless, and satisfying the afflicted, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. For elected leaders, that they may enact policies and assist those on the margins of society so that our nation may be a light to the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. For those who suffer from loneliness, isolation, especially those during this long winter months, that they may know the constant presence of the Holy Spirit, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. For all women and men who have consecrated their lives to God, who have committed themselves to be the salt of the earth and light to the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. For those in our communities who struggle to look beyond our own families, friends, neighbors, or neighborhoods, and for their courage to share God's love beyond all boundaries, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. And finally, for today's Mass is offered in loving memory of George Lynch, a longtime benefactor and family members to our Chalice Ministry, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. Generous God, you are the source of all good things, which you share with all creation. May your generosity inspire ours as we strive to create a world where all are free from want. Hear this and all our prayers through your most generous gift, your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as 
as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. and your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously Grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. pray this special prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to possess you within my soul. Since I am unable at this moment to receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live that made one in Christ, 
we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before I give my final blessing, we have a tradition at Our Lady of the Sacred Heart of praying a memorare to Our Lady of the Sacred Heart at the end of every Mass. And so I wonder if my parishioners might join me in saying that prayer. Remember, Our Lady of the Sacred Heart, the great things the Lord has done for you. He chose you for his mother. He wanted you close to his cross. He gives you a share in his glory. He listens to your prayer. Offer him our prayers of praise and thanksgiving. Present our petitions to him. Let us live like you in the love of your Son, that his kingdom may come. Lead all people to the source of living water that flows from his heart, spreading over the world hope and salvation, justice and peace. See our trust in you, answer our prayer. Show yourself always our mother, amen. Our Lady of the Sacred Heart, Saint Joseph, the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Our family has spanned the centuries and the globe. With God's grace, we started hospitals to care for the sick. We established orphanages and helped the poor. We are the largest charitable organization on the planet, bringing comfort to those in need. We educate more children than any other institution. We developed the scientific method and founded the college system. We defend the dignity of human life and uphold marriage. Guided by the Holy Spirit, we compiled the Bible. We are transformed by sacred scripture and sacred tradition, which have guided us for 2,000 years. We are the Catholic Church, with over one billion in our family, sharing in the sacraments and fullness of the Christian faith. Jesus started our church when he said to Peter, the first pope, you are rock, and upon this rock I will build my church. So if you've been away from the Catholic Church, we invite you to take another look Visit catholicscomehome.org today. We are Catholic. Welcome home. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you will not have life in you. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. Heart to be healed of its selfishness, of its pride, of all the things that keep me from loving like Jesus, the number one place to go is in the Mass, where I encounter sacrificial love himself. I was homeless. I lived on the streets. 
I was a meth addict. I had three abortions. And then I worked for Planned Parenthood. Please welcome Barbara Heil. It's such an honor to be participating in this Eucharistic Congress. Hi, I'm Ray Grijalba, and I will be speaking at the Eucharistic Congress that's being held on March 4th in Springfield, Massachusetts. I invite you to join me and many other Catholics to hear from incredible speakers like Dr. Carlos Periata, the doctor who personally analyzed the Eucharistic miracle in Tixla, Mexico. Spend enough time with another person, you recognize that in every human heart is a desire for love and a need for love. And that's what everyone is searching for. We had a room specifically in our house that we couldn't touch. It was temptation. It was couches wrapped in plastic. You can just call me Oscar. Join us at the Catholic Light Eucharistic Congress. Your kids will experience the good news like never before. We come up with a message in a fun, filled, and creative way. By having them actively experience God's Word, this will be a lesson they will never forget. Trust me, you'll have a ball. Please come to the Mass Mutual Center. Gather us around the Eucharist to celebrate the great gift of Christ truly present. with you all days all days Providence Place, owned by the Sisters of Providence, an ideal rental setting for retirees to continue their active, independent lifestyles. We have bright one and two bedroom apartments, a magnificent chapel with daily mass, restaurant style dining, and wellness and entertainment programs. Call for a tour, 413-534-9700. This past week, we received some very good news as the diocese announced that the final results have been tallied for the 2022 annual Catholic Appeal. The campaign had surpassed $3 million for the first time in nearly two decades. Rebecca Drake reports. The final figures for the 2022 annual Catholic Appeal are in, and the news is good. 
Rebecca, this is a very exciting year because we met our goal for the first time in nearly 20 years. The generosity of, of the people of the diocese is overwhelming and I'm so grateful to everyone for, for giving that little extra to send us over the goal. Nearly 18,000 donors contributed to last year's appeal, bringing the total raised to more than $3 million. And there is another bit of news to report. I would say the other piece of really good news is 64 parishes are getting rebates because they passed their goal. And it's impressive because so many of them um, were not on that list last year to receive rebates. One of the parishes that exceeded its goal was St. Cecilia's in Wilbraham, where Bishop Byrne recently celebrated the Saturday 4 p.m. Mass. And he says it is no surprise that Catholics in Wilbraham and throughout the diocese increased their contributions to the appeal this year. I think people acknowledge the good work and uh, of the church here in Western Massachusetts. And, and I've been working hard to build us together as a family and as a community, and I, and I really believe people are responding to that. One of the agencies receiving funds from the appeal is Catholic Charities, whose clients are among those most affected by the dramatic rise in the cost of living this last year. We rely upon the funds from ACA to really uh, support our emergency services program. And our emergency services program is there for people who find themselves in, uh, in crisis. The most important statistic from last year's ACA may not be the amount of each contribution, but the faith that inspires the act of giving. I think it brings a, a bit of empathy um, and maybe a, a realization that what little we do have, we are still called to share, and that in that sharing, there is the grace that, that we um, all are hoping to not only receive, but to share. And when I give a talk, the first thing I say is, at the end of Mass, the priest or the deacon is going to say, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. It's your mission to actually leave Mass and go out and be the hands and feet of Christ. What I've known and come to love about the people of the Diocese of Springfield, the people of Western Massachusetts, are their big hearts, their welcoming uh, smiles that I receive everywhere, both for me and then more especially for my dog, Zelly, uh, whenever we visit. Uh, I've also seen the incredible works and good things that people do in every one of our 79 parishes. And here are some words of gratitude for the donors who helped the annual Catholic Appeal reach its goal. If ever there was a time where your giving actually um, grew exponentially, it is when you give to the annual Catholic Appeal. So thank you to the donors, regardless of what you think you gave may not have been enough, it was enough. My message to those who have given this year uh, with such generosity would be simple. It would be thank you on behalf of our staff, on behalf of our clients. And I think uh, as one, the chorus would be, God bless you. My message is God bless you and thank you for all the good work that you've done and will continue to do. Bringing God's love to the four counties of Western Massachusetts, one prayer, one person, one gift at a time. In Springfield, I'm Rebecca Drake. Thanks, Rebecca. And a special word of thanks to all who so generously gave in 2022. This weekly televised mass is a recipient of ACA funds, which helps to keep us on the air here in the four counties of Western Massachusetts. So I personally thank you. Our sincere thanks to Father Ryan Rooney for celebrating our Mass today. We are grateful as well to members of his parish who provided music for our liturgy and joined us here in the Holy Spirit Chapel. Thank you, one and all. And friends, coming up this Saturday, February 11th at 9 a.m., Sacred Heart Parish in Feeding Hills will be hosting their annual Mass of Healing and Anointing with Bishop Byrne. 
This observance was instituted in 1992 by St. John Paul II, who designated that day the Feast of Our Lady of Lourdes as a special day in which to pray for those who are sick and suffering. The Sarkin of the Sick will be available as well as the opportunity to be prayed over by one of the many priests and deacons will be there for this special event. So friends, please mark your calendars for this Saturday at 9 a.m. at Sacred Heart Parish, 1065 Springfield Street in Feeding Hills. And a reminder that the Eucharistic Congress is now just a month away and registration is open. We do have a link for you on iobserve.org and on dialspringfield.org. Organizers have been hard at work in planning for this major gathering with many inspiring speakers scheduled to be there. So don't miss out and register today. We we'll also welcome members of the Eucharistic Congress Planning Committee to our Holy Spirit Chapel next week, as Father David Afiero will be our Mass celebrant. That's all coming your way next Sunday morning at the same time for your Chalice of Salvation, your spiritual connection. Until then, my friends, may you have a great week, and we'll see you right back here next Sunday morning. Goodbye for now. God bless. Love to all.